Marriage is difficult, especially when your life is surrounded by cameras. Well, as we learned, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and is now separated from his wife, Sophie Gregoire Trudeau. What's the political fallout? What's the personal fallout? I'm Adrian Batra. With me is Warren Kinsella, who has been around the political game for a very long time, has seen a lot of political marriages, shall we say. And Warren, when the news broke about uh, the Prime Minister and Sophie Trudeau, I'm wondering what went through your head in terms of just all of the fallout that is going to ensue. Well, uh, right off the top, I want to pay tribute to my editor, who happens to be you, <laughs> who said that we as a newspaper, we're not going to you know, get down in the gutter or what have you. Like I, I've been through divorce and been through divorce with kids. And it is like the most painful day you can possibly have having that conversation with your kids. And the thing that the kids are most afraid of is it becoming public you know, and being seen as losers and people making fun of them and so on. So I thought you struck uh, exactly the right tone and and said to us, and, and we all agreed with you, that, you know, children are not political fodder. And in this case, uh, Sophie Trudeau um, isn't really political fodder either. There is going to be analysis uh, about what this means. Uh, I have a strong view about what I think it means, and it's not all bad for Justin Trudeau. But mm -hmm. it, you know, if, as human beings, uh, I felt badly for them, and I think all of us at the paper did. I think that there are, you know, a lot of questions that are justifiably should be asked, and. The challenge right now is anything that is asked of the prime minister could be perceived as a personal attack. There are plenty of things that one can go after this government on their policies and the positions that they've taken on behalf of Canadians. There's plenty of, of, of fodder there. But in this context of such a heated political environment and, and, and poll after poll showing, that the Conservatives and Pierre Polyev could win the next federal election. What sort of tone, tenor do the opposition parties have to take? Well, I mean, you know, the statistics kind of point us in the right direction. There's 100,000 marriages in this country every year, and more than half of them end in divorce. So there's a lot of people who vote, who are out there, who are probably feeling somewhat sympathetic to the Trudeau mm -hmm. this morning. But, you know, more specifically to answer your question, you know, I've led war rooms for Jean Chrétien and Dalton McGinty, who, by the way, you know, married and uh, stayed with their high school sweethearts. Those are the best candidates to work for because they make your life less complicated. Um, like, for sure, votes and quotes, you know, how somebody spends public money, that stuff is all fair game. And you're allowed to get really tough. You really, you should get really tough on that stuff when your opponent makes a mistake you're allowed to exploit that but the personal stuff canadians in particular canadian voters don't like it a good example of that in uh, 2011 you know jack layton a police report came out uh, saying that he was found in some um, uh, place that was inappropriate it it looked pretty bad on the surface uh, not only did Canadians not care, they elevated his party to the official opposition, gave them the best result they'd had. You know, Bill Clinton, after Monica Lewinsky, he gets impeached in the House of Representatives. Polls come out saying he's the most popular president in the history of polling. People just generally don't like the personal stuff. So any Tories, and I think Polyev has been very smart so far, he has said zero, right? It's mm -hmm. just zip to my knowledge. And has probably said to his caucus, none of you better comment on this in any way, shape or form, or you're going to be sorry. That's the way to deal with it. Talk about the public, not the personal. Let's go back a little bit into history, Warren. Um, you know, often they say history does repeat itself. This isn't the first Trudeau whose marriage in office has uh, taken, uh, taken some hits, taken a bit of a, a bit of a beating. Certainly Pierre Elliott Trudeau, Justin Trudeau's father, back in in the late 70s when he was married to his mother margaret uh things didn't go so well shall we say so it is the second trudeau in office to have um you know a marriage under pressure to be to be clear 
But in 1980, when Pierre Elliott Trudeau went to campaign, it worked out pretty well for him, didn't it? Bingo. And, you know, this is, I had a breakfast with a bunch of political people this morning, some conservatives saying, oh, he's, you know, hard, he's hurt by this. And I said, well, for sure, he's hurt personally. But politically, guys, give your head a shake if you think there isn't a way to, you know, quite frankly, take advantage of this situation. The day, Keith Davey, you know, the liberal rainmaker and his son, Ian, I was very close to, both of them now sadly passed away. And I remember, I remember Senator Davies saying to me, you know, around 1980, that time that you refer to, seeing Pierre Trudeau, single dad, you know, crawling under the piano at 24 Sussex after his young sons, you know, and hoisting Justin in his arms and so on. You know, that was not alone, but that was part of the reason why Pierre Trudeau came back with a majority government in 1980. People were sympathetic to the notion that he was a single dad struggling along with, you know, uh, his political stuff, but also with the personal stuff. This is something that I don't think hurts Justin Trudeau politically at all. And I think that's why you're seeing Polyev and others being smart and just saying nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, Warren, if anybody that's in and around the Ottawa bubble, and you know all about that, many would say that this is arguably one of the worst kept secrets. Um, you know, we've sort of seen uh, Sophie and Justin together in public and there seemed to have been some animosity between the two. I mean, the, the, the photos that were taken or some videos that have been put out there, there looked like there was, you know, a, a bit of a divide happening, which you, you can appreciate as, as the job of prime minister is so weighty and it's so heavy and it's so taxing on the personal, um, uh, on your on your personal life. But is this one of those sorts of rumors that has been out there for a really long time and now it's just now, uh, uh, you know, has been sort of codified and now they've, they've just confirmed it. Is there is there something that has happened that, I, I mean, we can only speculate obviously, but why now? Why did they go public now? Well, uh, we don't know. And the, I mean, the, you know, the one thing you and I know, and it, you, I think, much more than me, we hear things about political people all the time. We hear things about how they conduct themselves personally, getting drunk, uh, extramarital affair, um, you know, some criminal behavior. You and I hear about that stuff all the time. And it's usually, you know, from somebody who doesn't like them. And you and I and our colleagues at the paper and all media have to react to that in the same way. We need proof. You know, for example, everybody said that Donald Trump and Melania Trump were going to split two seconds after he left the White House. Well, guess what? You know, they're still there. The Kremlinologists were sitting there and looking at video of the two of them together and saying, oh, she's going to dump them. She's still there. She's still at Mar-a-Lago with him. So you have to be super careful in these situations not to get ahead of the story. So why is it broken now? I, you know, the Trudeaus are the only ones who can answer that. Were all of us hearing about these types of stories for a long time? Absolutely. But the reason why, and I think our readers need to know, the reason why we couldn't report on it is, you know, you need proof in our business. You can't just make it up like some kooky people do on Twitter. And, um, you know, that's the right decision. It's the right decision that you made, quite frankly. So I'm wondering, in terms of just more broadly speaking, we know that Justin Trudeau has said he is going to lead the Liberals into the next federal election whenever Jigmeet Singh decides that is going to be, basically. <laughs> um, but leading up to, to these events with, uh, with uh, respect to his separation announcement, you know, Trudeau was suffering um, some internal blows from the from the Liberal caucus, a lot of frustration, a lot of uh, anger, particularly from the backbenches, as, as is often the, uh, the case, who don't feel like they're part of the big conversation, too much control and, and decision making in the prime minister's office, a recent cabinet shuffle that did had little to no effect, um, did not certainly did not look like it was changing any, any direction or actually acknowledging many of the challenges that Canadians are facing. 
So there was a lot of internal pressure from um, coming from liberals. It's not what you or say or what I say or what anybody in the media or opposition say. It's going to be, I believe, um, the Liberal Party, the caucus that says whether or not they feel confident and comfortable with him leading the party into the into the next federal election. I know that you've already said that you don't think that this 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 probably helps him um, more, more than than it than it hurts. But I'm wondering at the next inevitable, you know, gaffe, misstep, hiccup with with Justin Trudeau there, you know, the, it's just around the corner. Does that change the calculus? I think uh, a little bit it does. You know, the, the campaign is going to be completely different. You know, going back to 2019, um, he'd always been 2015, you know, been the family man, you know, with his kids and so on. So the optics are going to be completely different. And that's going to present a challenge for them. And maybe it creates an opportunity for mm -hmm. Pierre Polyev. We'll, we'll find out. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, on balance, his bigger problem is um, Canada. You know, Canada is divided. The economy is not doing what it needs to do. And um, the polls say, if you look at the abacus that came out last week, you look at the leger that came out last week, and also to some extent, nanos, they're saying he's 10 points behind. What does that mean? Being 10 points behind federally means that Pierre Polyev is on the cusp of a majority government. So he cannot be defeated. It's not quite there yet. He's got some wasted vote, Polyev does, in Alberta and Saskatchewan, where you and I are from. But mm -hmm. he's pretty damn close. So that is a clear indication that Trudeau's got a multiplicity of problems. So I think the Liberal Brain Trust, <laughs> to use that oxymoron, mm -hmm is probably <laughs> sitting around trying to figure out, okay, is this an opportunity for us or is this a problem? And uh, at this point, uh, well, people like us will write lots of opinion pieces about it. I think it has the potential to be more of an opportunity for him than a threat. One thing we know for sure, there will be far more information on this story. Go to the torontosun.com and hit that subscribe button and go to X and share this video.